The split call? No, is that, that's not okay. No, no, I think, I think the Greens have been kind enough to say that they'd like okay. to listen to for me for well, 10 minutes. Well, we look forward to 10 minutes from the Honourable Trevor Mallard. Uh, thank, thank, thank you, Mr. Speaker. And I, uh, I'd, like to, I'd, I'd, like, I'd like to say that I'm sort of starting this um, in some anxiety, uh, Mr. Speaker. Looking around my colleagues in the House, I have a feeling that I'm missing the men's caucus of the Labour Party, uh, which, which could well be meeting uh, at the moment. Uh, m m m uh, Mr. Speaker, I'm, I'm sort of slightly worried about why I might be excluded from that group, uh, uh, Mr. Mr. Speaker. But I, 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 w I would like to start to say, start by saying that I sort of have some experience of vehicles of this type, and and. Uh, and know a little more than I used to uh, 40 odd years ago about which vehicle should be on, uh, driven across roads and which shouldn't be. A very bad experience in the county roads of uh, Taramanui with a D7 bulldozer uh, where I discovered even, 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 even when you have the blade up, when you go across the Tarsiel Road, it does tend to make uh, quite a difference to the surface uh, as, the, uh, as, the, as, the D, as the D7 uh, grips and, 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 and rips it up. So, sir, I, I do know uh, that vehicles, uh, even if they're not generally driven on roads, uh, can cause damage uh, and quite a lot of expense, and, and in this particular case, annoyance uh, to the county clerk of the Tamaranui um, uh, County Council uh, of the time. Uh, Mr Speaker, I, um, I listen to, uh, with great interest to the speech of Simon O'Connor, and he was saying that this was a small but an important step uh, in t towards having a more efficient roading system. Mr Speaker, this, is, this bill is no such thing. It is no such thing at all. This bill, and I've, you know, I've been here uh, looking at it very carefully for at least 20 minutes now, appears to be only something which is fixing up a mess that is the responsibility uh, of a National Party Minister of Transport. I can't tell from reading it whether it goes back to Morris Williamson or whether it's all Jerry Brownlee's work or, or whether Mr Fix-It or Mr Not Quite Fix-It, Stephen Joyce, uh, was the person who was... I, from the smile, I could tell it was Stephen Joyce, not Morris Williamson, uh, who was the person responsible for making this mess originally uh, and then Jerry Brownlee uh, tried to fix it up twice. And so what this bill does, Mr Speaker, is to try and correct uh, some errors in transport legislation. Now, I know this is an unusual thing to say, but I'm actually feeling slightly sorry for the National Party ministers uh, in this particular area because I think it's fair to say in the transport area that there's, there's, there's two areas of legislation, especially minor legislation and regulation, uh, where you're not that surprised when it's wrong. And it's agriculture and transport. Uh, and, and that does say... Sorry? Yes, agriculture and transport, they're the ones that most often have to come back with amendments to amendments to amendments in order to try and get the legislation right. And that probably does go to the, I don't want to criticise the public service, but over a period of years as to the quality of the recruitment and the payment of the people, uh, and as a result of that, some of the legislation that we've had out of those agencies, uh, frankly, hasn't been that flash. And this parliament has wasted a lot of time on going over it and over it and over it uh, in, in trying to get it right. Uh, Mr Speaker, I, I will be interested from the nation, next National uh, Party Speaker uh, in, a, in a better explanation uh, around combination vehicles. Um, is, this, is, is a combination vehicle something like a truck and trailer that is only sometimes put together? It is, is it a, a truck which has the basic trailer attachment but not on at the current time? Or is it something which very, very rarely gets put together in that combination? Uh, because the, the, the requirement to apply for a certificate um, at a point soon after using it is quite, it, it, you know, it's something which is, which is important. Um, and, and if there is a requirement to do something rapidly, one would assume that it is an unusual combination. Now, I, I presume it doesn't apply to, um, you know, when it's a combination ruck uh, thing. It doesn't, it, it's not the Land Cruiser, it's not the diesel Land Cruiser giving the other diesel Land Cruiser a tow over the Wainui Hill 
uh, because one of them's run out of diesel. Clearly, they run out of ruck fairly often, but um, if they, they still go when they run out of ruck, but when they run out of diesel, d d is, is a combination ruck vehicle um, one Land Cruiser diesel towing another Land Cruiser diesel or not? Now, is that, is that what we're referring to as a, as a, as a combination vehicle? And if a vehicle is not actually using its motor, when it has a motor, at the time it is being towed, is it subject to ruck charges or not? As, you know, I, I know members opposite are carefully across the legislation, and, and if, if, even if they can't, uh, announce, can't tell us now, I'm sure as we work our way through the long uh, and extensive committee stages on part two, on, especially on part two of this bill, which uh, it's, one, it's a bit sneaky really, it sort of it pretends to be minor, minor other amendments, but actually there is quite a lot uh, in here. So, um, so if we look at the it, it, it new 12A, the agreement to pay road user charges in relation to a combination of vehicles, I think there's room for uh, more explanation there. Um, now, the, the next thing, um, or carries uh, in display of a ruck licence. Now, the deal around ruck licences is that you normally need to be able to see them. And so what does or carried mean? If there is a combination of vehicles and there is a ruck licence, can someone keep the ruck licence in their pocket rather than displaying it as is normally required? It appears to be what we're permitting now, and I, I, I'm quite surprised, frankly, because I would have thought for a government that is working hard to get the ruck revenue, it's pretty hard to get the ruck revenue if the, if the, the ruck miles Ruck kilometres, I suppose it's called now, uh, is uh, is kept. Is, well, it used to be miles back when I was in Taramaru County. Back, back, the yeah, metrics. It's a new thing. Um, it, it was in the days. To be fair, that was in the days of 60 miles an hour limits, um, and and so that 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 that, that has that has changed. Um, now there's the exemption of uh, I want a new clause 38A exemption. Ruck vehicles not required. Uh, to be licensed. Now, this appears to give to a minister quite a broad power uh, as to what is what is to be licensed or not. So, it, 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 if you look at uh, 12, uh, 38 a one a, it can be all ruck vehicles that are exempt from registration under the Land Transport Act 1988, or B one or more classes of of ruck. So, the the minister can. Um, specify particular, uh, he can say all ruck vehicles or a particular class of, of ruck vehicles are exempt. Well, Ms. is that eight minutes already, Miss Figure? Oh no, it could, oh that no, that that couldn't possibly. Be. I, I had ten minutes, not five, Mr. Uh, Mr. Speaker. I gave um, you ten. Well, and I hadn't even got, I hadn't even got onto the bit about the spooks, oh. uh, Mr. Speaker. <laughs> if one, if one goes to page, page, no, no, absolutely. The minister says not. The member in front of me, Minister Two B, um, says, says um, that it's not in this bill. Actually, this bill does relate to the Search and Surveillance Act 2012. And, and, and who would have thought that there'd be a, a sneaky amendment in relation to the ability to search and surveil hidden away in something called the Land Transport and Road User Charges Legislation Amendment Bill? I, I bet, I bet the Prime Minister, the Prime Minister who is in charge of the GCSB knows nothing, knows nothing about this. It is another, it is another, it is another attempt, uh, Mr Speaker, uh, to use the Maxwell Spark approach on the part of Jerry, Jerry Brownlee and to not let the boss know what, what is going on. And, and, and Mr Speaker, it does involve, it does involve um, getting warrants. It involves getting warrants under the Search and Surveillance Act. Well, M Mr Speaker, you know, do we really want such serious legislation, such serious legislation to be used to find out if someone's got a ruck ticket in their pocket. I mean, the idea, the idea that the, some of the most serious legislation in the country that is very, very controversial, something that is up for amendment, um, could be 
uh, could be brought into force in order to search for a bit of paper on RUT is just disgraceful and I look forward to this uh, lot of discussion on this particular point in the committee stages. I call Jamie Lee Ross. I commend the bills of the House. Um, members, this debate has concluded. The question is that the motion be agreed to. Those of that opinion will say aye. To the contrary, no. The ayes have it. Land transfer and road user charges legislation amendment bill, second reading. This bill is set down for committee stage next sitting day. Call on government order of the day number four. Social Security fraud measures and debt recovery amendment bill.